Uh, we're now looking at question 7 from the January 2011 BY1 paper. Uh, this question is uh, on uh, both DNA and uh, cell division. Uh, cell division, now it, it's both mitosis and meiosis in this question. Um, so it starts off looking at uh, uh, basically uh, DNA uh, and RNA actually, uh, where you have to fill in um, a small table. Um, uh, this uh, this table here is uh, it's a little bit odd because um, the space that uh, has been given to you to actually write in your responses is not particularly uh, big enough to be honest. Um, and I know from uh, some of my students they got a bit confused by this table because it didn't look like you had to write anything in uh, the boxes, but uh, you actually do have to write uh, some statements in. Uh, so basically, the first uh, the first question is all to do with uh, DNA and uh, messenger RNA, okay? And um, you have several features here, and uh, you have to actually uh, state in the boxes uh, initially then the name of the sugar found in DNA and uh, in messenger RNA. After that, you have to uh, state the number of carbon atoms in the sugar. Then you have to state the number of polynucleotide chains in the molecule. And lastly, uh, the actual location of the uh, molecule uh, within the cell. Um, so I'll quickly uh, run through the uh, responses here. Uh, the name of the sugar in DNA, of course, is deoxyribose. Okay. Uh, the sugar in messenger RNA is ribose. Okay. And ribose is the sugar that's found in all the different types of RNA. Uh, your ribosomal RNA and uh, your transfer RNA. Uh, the number of carbon atoms in the sugar then, uh, well, both deoxyribose and ribose sugars are uh, pentose sugars, which means they have five carbons uh, in their structure. Okay, uh, number of polynucleotide chains uh, in the molecule. Uh, well, DNA, of course, is a double helix. Okay, so it has two polynucleotide chains uh, that are joined together but messenger RNA is just single stranded so there's just one uh, polynucleotide chain. Uh, location uh, within the cell, uh, DNA is only found uh, in the nucleus. Okay. Um, now the location of uh, messenger RNA, all right, um, it's found in two locations uh, within the cell. Um, it's actually initially found in the nucleus. That is where it's made. Okay, it's made um, from a DNA template, and uh, the messenger RNA then moves into the uh, cytoplasm. Okay, so there's the answers uh, for part A, and I'll just jot those in for you. Okay, so uh, I've jotted the answers in there, and uh, as you can see from the the actual size of uh, of my type in there. Um, with the with the deoxyribose one, the it's difficult to actually fit that into the small box, uh, and indeed down the bottom where I've got nucleus and cytoplasm, uh, I hope you can see that that does say nucleus and cytoplasm. Uh, it was a little bit uh, confusing for students, I think, these small boxes, but uh, uh, there we are. That's the answers uh, for part A. Right, moving on to part B then, we have a table here which uh, you should be familiar with. There's a similar one in the notes uh, accompanying this app. A um, little bit of background really, this, this is to do with uh, Shargaf and his experiments where he found that no matter what organism he looked at, um, the ratio of um, uh, adenine and thymine was always 1 and the ratio of guanine to cytosine was always when, and that then provides evidence of the base pairing rule. Okay, so this is a table of some of his uh, data. Okay, and um, the question is, explain why the relative amounts of adenine is almost the same as the relative amounts of thymine in each source. Um, the key here is... Um, if I underline it, it, it's almost the same, is the key here. Now, picking up on, uh, start again, let's um, pick it up on that 
uh, part of the question would ensure that you'd actually get the three marks because there is a mark for addressing why the relative amounts are almost the same. All right, so let me let me highlight what this means. Uh, so we're looking at uh, adenine and thymine. So let's go for the rat muscle. And adenine is 28.6 and thymine is 28.4. Now, if, if the ratio of adenine to guanine is 1, then the percentages or the relative amounts of the bases should be identical. But they're not. Uh, there's um, a 0 0.2 difference between them. Uh, it is 0.6 or 28.6 adenine, 28.4 thymine. So that's that's what it means by them being almost the same. Um, it goes it goes the same way for the wheat. It's 27.3 for adenine and 27.1 for thymine. And lastly, in the yeast, it's 31.3 and 32.9. So the actual values of uh, nitrogenous bases are not identical and you'll get a mark um, for giving a reason why uh, they're not identical okay okay so uh, the answer would be really that um, the relative amounts of adenine are almost the same as that for thymine uh, because those are complementary bases okay and they undergo base pairing all right, so that'll actually get you two marks. Uh, they, they're complementary base pairing, which means adenine will uh, join with thymine. Okay, uh, that's two marks. The third mark then is for addressing this issue of why the values are not identical. All right, why are they almost the same? Uh, and the reason why is that uh, that's experimental error. All right, in all experiments, um, you have to repeat your experiments, of course, but you will always have errors associated with any data that you generate uh, through experiments. Uh, and that's the answer there. OK, they're not identical because of experimental error. There you go. Uh, so I've said adenine and thymine are complementary bases, which undergo base pairing. That will get you two marks. And thirdly, then, the values are not identical due to experimental error. OK, uh, moving on then, part two. Um, this um, part of the question really is looking at uh, cell division here. OK, uh, both parts two and three, uh, in fact, deal with um, cell division. OK, so let me read the question for you. Explain why the base sequence of the DNA sample taken from a rat's bone marrow would be the same as those taken from the muscle of the same rat. OK, uh, now you don't need to worry too much about what bone marrow is. OK, all you need to appreciate is that you are looking at the DNA from two different parts of the rat. One is the muscle and one is the bone marrow okay and uh, base sequence then you should know what the base sequence is it's just to do with the order of the nitrogenous bases uh, in DNA okay and um, we want to know why the base sequence would be the same all right well this is certainly a mitosis question now all right because the cells um, that are found in the bone marrow of a rat have originated uh, from the same cells as the muscle cells have. Now, the muscle cells and the bone marrow cells are, are different. They perform different functions, but they have the same DNA because they have been produced by the mitosis cell division. OK, and... Um, Mitosis, of course, is the type of cell division where you do not produce any variation. You get genetically identical daughter cells. And that's why uh, the base sequence in DNA is the same. It hasn't undergone any changes uh, during uh, the mitotic uh, cell division. Um, so this may be a little bit awkward. Um, for people to figure out but you've got to think about it logically 
okay, and link uh, sort of uh, distant facts together. Uh, so the, the, the key for me for this, uh, this question is the fact that the base sequence of the DNA was the same. And that should click and think, oh, right, okay. Uh, during mitosis, then, you have genetically identical cells. That means the DNA hasn't been altered uh, in any way. Okay, uh, so this is perhaps a, a, a little bit more um, challenging question. It does require you to think a little bit as to what the examiner is after. All right, but when you think about it, what, what possibly uh, else could it be? Uh, other than a, a mitosis uh, question. Okay, so I shall jot uh, an answer in for you. Okay, the answer I've put in then is uh, uh, both types of cell have been produced by mitosis, okay, um, from the same original cell. Okay, so during um, the development of any organism, uh, the organism really starts off from one cell, which is uh, called a zygote. All right. Now, I could have actually put uh, that term in my answer if I wanted to, but I think uh, same original cell will, will, will be fine. So that original zygote, then, is one that is undergoing mitosis and uh, producing genetically identical uh, daughter cells. All right. So I've actually mentioned there mitosis. Uh, uh, the cells produced by mitosis are genetically identical. So I have the same base sequence in DNA. All right, so that zygote is divided by mitosis and it's produced uh, genetically identical uh, daughter cells. Okay, so I've also said then um, for another mark that it's during mitosis the DNA is replicated and then passed into the new daughter cells that have been formed. All right, so every cell um, in the body has originated from uh, the, the first zygote and it's due to repeated DNA replications um, that each cell in the body, whether it's a bone marrow cell or a muscle cell, has the same identical uh, DNA. Okay. Uh, right, uh, moving on to the last part, part three. Um, you're asked to explain how a sample of DNA from a rat sperm cell differs from that of a muscle cell from the same rat again, okay? Now, this is clearly uh, related to uh, meiosis, all right? You're talking about sperm cells, which are gametes, and all gametes are produced by meiosis, okay? And they're saying, you know, why is the DNA different in the rat sperm cell compared to the muscle cell from the same rat? And it's quite... Uh, clearly due to meiosis and uh, that type of cell division uh, creating uh, genetically different cells. Meiosis causes variation to occur. It alters the DNA um, and you should know how that uh, alteration of DNA is brought about. Uh, you could talk about crossing over, uh, independent assortment and, and so on. Okay, um, so for this uh, for this answer then, uh, what we can say is um, the uh, cells are genetically different. They show variation. They're produced by meiosis. Okay. And secondly, there's half the amount of DNA in uh, the gametes. All right. That's the third uh, difference to how uh, the DNA would be different. Okay. Remember, uh, gametes are haploid cells, which means they have uh, half the uh, amount of DNA. Okay, uh, so my answer is uh, sperm cells are produced by meiosis, which produces genetically different daughter cells. These cells, uh, these cells therefore show genetic uh, variation. Uh, sperm cells are also haploid, so contain half the amount of DNA compared to the muscle cell, which is diploid. All right. So uh, the key things here are produced by meiosis, uh, genetically different, uh, contain half the amount of DNA. All right, and uh, that should get you um, uh, three marks. Okay, uh, lastly, if we just have a quick look at the mark scheme. Okay, I think the part A with the table is straightforward. 
All right. Please note that uh, they do want nucleus and cytoplasm for um, the location of messenger RNA. Uh, part B then, you've got your base pairing, adenine and thymine are complementary, and um, for the uh, results not being identical, you, it's because of the experimental error. Okay, uh, there's the uh, mitosis uh, answer there. You've got uh, DNA replication occurring, the cells are genetically identical, and uh, the cells are passed on from the parent during fertilization. Or formation of the zygote okay uh, this formation of zygote is what I mean by uh, the original uh, cell from which all cells in the body have uh, have formed okay and lastly then the the meiosis uh, question you had half as much DNA which is haploid there's variation or genetically different and it's produced by meiosis okay and that's uh, question seven done